In the eight years since he scraped together $175,000 for his first commercial movie, She's Gotta Have It, Spike Lee has become a major player in the filmmaking community. To date, he has produced and directed seven films, from the biography of Malcolm X to the No Sex, No Violence, No Drugs of Crooklyn. Filmmaking is just one of the hats he wears. He's also an executive producer. He owns a music label. He has apparel shops in Brooklyn and Los Angeles. He's writing a script for CBS Pilot. He's starting an ad agency. He's teaching at Harvard, and he has started his eighth film. All of that uh, shows the remarkable energy, and I'm pleased to have him back. Welcome. Glad to have uh, Well, you're a fixture of the next game. Every time I've ever been to the game, you're there, sitting right there. You yeah. get to sit right there on the front row, too. Season tickets. Season tickets. Mm -hmm. um, why do you love the Knicks? I mean, why do you love basketball? What is it about well, this my, game? My father introduced me to the first sport my father introduced me was uh, baseball. I think most fathers, you know, it's yeah, baseball right, first, then right. football, then basketball. But he started taking me to these triple headers he used to have at the Old Guard and uh, yeah. Holiday Festival. You see Providence yeah. with Jimmy Walker and Jabbar right. and with right. UCLA. NIT, probably. You probably went to the NIT. NIT. You know, we go triple headers in the yeah. morning, triple headers at night. Yeah. And so. I grew up a big Walt Frazier fan, and uh, yeah. every, you know, she's got to have it. My season tickets were in the blue, you know, Bob yeah. Uka seats, and I've just moved down each film. You, there's you no got better else to seats. Move. <laughs> nah. All right, this is Spike Lee at the game. Uh, we'll talk over this, but take a look. This is Mr. Lee at the Knicks at the Garden. All right, here we go. This is, look at, look at you. Talk to me, Spike. <laughs> Tell me what, what's going on here. Another bad call by the refs. Yeah. There you are. Trash talk, getting in his face. Look at you. Oh, this is against Orlando. Yeah, there you go. The Sparks, magic. Uh, Johnny. The three. Yeah. There you go. Now, where are you? Okay. Are you uh, what are you saying to the players? Encouragement. Uh, encouragement <laughs> to the Knicks. And what are you saying to one? When I was there sitting next to you one night, you were talking to Maxwell from the Rockets. Oh. You were giving him such a hard time. You know, look, there you are, too. There was your wife to your right. Um, does she like basketball as well? Loves it. I mean, my friends can't can get in now. You <laughs> what? Oh, your but, friends can't come to the game nah, anymore? Nah, they're out. Yeah. Okay, t tell me about, a couple of things about sports. Um, Mike Tyson. I've been to visit Mike six times since he's been in the joint. Yeah. And uh, he's in great spirits. He's been doing a lot of reading, a lot of re reflecting, and uh, I'm looking forward to when he's... He gets out and I think he's going to box again. Yeah. Is that what he wants to do? It's the only thing he knows. That's, 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 that's what, what he, he says. knows. Yeah. That's what he knows and uh, he regrets, you know, circumstances that put him there or the stuff, the bad karma he might have compiled, you know. Yeah. But uh, he's, he's all right. He's you're, you're not good. making a movie there. Just, just, this is friendship. No, nah, I don't know how the press turned it around. I was going at them making a movie. This is just a friend visiting somebody who's in prison. So, uh. I have no intention of doing any films about Mike Tyson. What change have you noted in him? He says he's sorry about the, you know, whatever, all the, all the Well, I the think that, that, you know, when you're in prison, you know, it gives you a lot of time to reflect. And you look past on your actions. Some of them might not have been good. And, you know, what goes around comes around. And uh, yeah. he's, he's sorry yeah. about the stuff, you know, stuff that happened. You, you know the fight game pretty well? A little bit. Okay. Uh, Teddy Atlas was here the mm -hmm. other day, was in the corner with... Yeah, the guy pulled a gun, I'm like, right? Uh, exactly. <laughs> and we, we, we mentioned that, as a matter of mm -hmm. fact. Uh, he says, he, he, I think it was Teddy Atlas that told me, and I'm, I may be losing it, but I think it was Teddy Atlas that told me in that interview that he doesn't think Tyson will ever be the champion again because he thought he has lost it. He's lost a step or he's lost something. Uh, do you have any sense of that? Who, look at a heavyweight. Look at a heavyweight champion division now. Yeah, Lennox Lewis. Mike Tyson will be Mike. champ again. He's gonna kill them all. Could he? How about Riddick Bowe? Kill him. Kill him. No question in your mind no that he question. hasn't lost it, and he know he thinks in his head that he'll be the champion again. He knows it. That he can take anybody that he sees out there. I mean, he's not. He's gonna have to take a couple, you know, a year to get yeah. to get the title and, shot. But, huh? What do you think of um, the people surrounding him? Well. As I said before, he's done had a, he's had a lot of time to do reflection and, you know, and do some house cleaning. Oh, and who's going to go? <laughs> I think he's going to clean house. Well, let me tell me who's going to go. Come on. Charlie, all I'm saying is I think he's going to clean house. And, you know, could you possibly get involved in his career? I mean, 
I'm there for support. I'm not a one of <laughs> I just want him, you know, to be, you know, be righteous, win the heavyweight championship, you know. There's no personal gain in my part. At Why all. him for you? What is it about him that, that appeals to you? Like from Brooklyn, East Brownsville, New yeah. York, East New York. So was Riddick Bo. Yeah, but he moved away. Yeah. And he's never really claimed Brooklyn. But there is, I mean, is there something more than that, though? I mean, there... Just, you know, I think Mike has, has led a tragic life, and I, my heart has always went out for him, even before, you know, the, the Desiree Washington yeah. thing. What do you think about that? I mean, do you think he was got an unfair deal, wasn't represented well, all that? Or do you think he just put it behind him, he served his time, he's, he's let him come hopefully out? hopefully get out, you know, early three years and just move on, hopefully learn from uh, past mistakes. Yeah. Um, if you have a, you, you're not a Muslim, are you? No. Is he? Has he converted? Yes, he, he in, converted. In, that's what I thought in yes, prison. Yes, he did. Yeah. Um, Crooklyn, tell me about this movie. Well, we're very happy with uh, the response it's to it. It's lighter than what you've done? Yes. Uh, I think it's lighter, but I don't think it's the vast departure that some people said, you know, like, all of a sudden, this is a warm and gentler Spike Lee. Like, I never had those qualities, or those qualities were never in any of my other films. Yeah. I just felt that, as far as my career goes and the types of films I want to make, that it was important to do something different and not duplicate what we did with Malcolm X or the other two films dealing with race. Right. Jungle Fever. Jungle Fever, and, and Do the Right Thing, the and, right and thing. The, you know, race stuff between black people, you know, school days. I just felt it was time to change of pace and I think it just really shows you know the versatility that I have and the types of films I want to make I don't always want to do a film that deals with you know the racial climate in this country yeah did you feel like it was necessary for a change of pace after Malcolm yes you know because yeah. uh, that was know, a long time project two years, years devoted night and day to it two years night and day and uh I don't really don't want to, you know, box myself into that, right. that corner. I want to stay on Crooklyn because uh, we don't have that much time. But are, are you, how do you feel now when you can look back on the Malcolm experience? You made the film you wanted to make? I mean, a lot of, uh, you, you feel... We I mean, made the film we wanted to make. I think that... Yeah. And the Academy Awards, you think, were unfair because they didn't give you the fair shot? We don't shot. even worry about that. All right, I you're moving we, on. We made the film that we wanted to make, and I think that history will bear us out. And, you know, Scent of a Woman and all the other stuff. Yeah. It's not going to hold up to Malcolm X, you know, 20, 30 years down the line. I, I truly feel that. Did it change you in any way? Did it change... Malcolm X? Yeah. It made me stronger because that's the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. And, uh, you know, there were hurdles that set in front of us. In terms you know, of raising the money, in terms of being everything. able to make the film you wanted to make, I mean, in terms it, of... I mean, they've been trying to make that film, you know, 22, 23 years before me, so it didn't start with me, you know, that's been like... Yeah. quarter of a century trying to get this yeah, film It says made. something about you that you ended up making the film. Something about your own tenacity well, and your Denzel skills. Denzel, too, I think that it was just time and, you know, it was meant to be made when it was made and Denzel and I were the, were the people that were meant to do it, yeah. I think. He's a great actor, isn't he? Great. Big basketball fan. Also. Oh, he likes basketball, too? But he doesn't like the Knicks. He's a no, big, he's a, he likes the Knicks, but he lives in L.A., so he has a season ticket to the Lakers. Yeah, well, not a great year there, was it? No, no. <laughs> Down here for that. Yeah. Maybe Pat, well, do you think Pat will be here next year? Riley? Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Okay. Players are going to go before him. Like who? No, I'm saying if anybody's oh, going, oh, he right. plays before okay. he goes. Let me take a look. We got a clip here from Crooklyn. It, it, the story came, did, this idea was came from your My sister. sister. Joie. Uh, right, it's her Joie. original idea. She wrote the first couple of drafts my brother saying they came to me. Yeah. And you not to it. make the film, but to say, do you know anybody who, want, who could help us get this made? And I, said, I read it, said, I'll make it. Yeah. And uh, that's that. I think the clip now is uh, the Partridge Family clip. All right, that's it. Is the TV on? Is that it? The yes. Partridge Family. Crooklyn, directed by Spike Lee. Here it is. Um, let me tell you about some of the critics, what they say about this, in case you don't know. Uh, the Washington Post, listen to this. For those who can overlook the occasional flat nota, Crooklyn is a spiritual rendering of African-American family life in the early 1970s, modulating from heavy to light, from angry to lyrical, and so on. The movie's an enjoyable emotional symphony. You like that? Who wrote that? Uh, the Washington Post, uh, uh, Des and Howe. You like that? Mm -hmm. All right, how about this? Crooklyn is so mild that it is the first Spike Lee film with the potential to be turned into a television show. More importantly, it is the first one to display real warmth of heart. You like that? 
I mean, I tell I you if you agree with this. I'm, I don't I'm interested think that what is, critics I don't think. think it's a mild picture. I just, you know, I have to do the films I want to make. You know, if I do a film like this, they say it's too mild. I do do the right thing. They accuse me trying to incite 35 million Americans to burn down America. So, you know, I can't well, worry about... On, are you guilty on both counts or neither count? Not guilty. All right, not guilty, he said. Now, listen to this. This is from The New Yorker. You read that magazine, don't you? Spike Lee's Crookland is slight in everything but length. The picture runs well over two hours, and you feel every moment of it because Lee can't seem to find a, 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 a theme or style to shape this. You know, well, that... the movie's uh, under two hours, so yeah. maybe it felt like that over him. But, you know, you know, I really, I just have to continue yeah. to make the films I want to make. Knock on wood, I'm, I, I will get a chance to continue yeah. to do that. Is anything you want to do, I mean, do you feel like anything Spike wants to do with enough dedication, enough hard work, enough energy, he can do it. Sure. I've always felt that. I mean, I just think that's, I was instilled by my parents and my grandparents that, you know, they always gave us confidence and uh, mm -hmm. go down swinging, at least. And that's defined your life? Go down swinging, if you gotta go down. What do you want? Me? Yeah. What do you want to do? Well, I mean, you want to make... Well, I'm doing what I, you know, what I want to do. I think I'm blessed. I'm able to make films. I, I mean, I don't think you have to go back a long time and see an African-American filmmaker who's able to go from film to film to film. Uh, when we start Clockers in July from Richard the, Price, from Richard Price right. now, that would be our eighth film in the last ten years. So yeah, and, and did Scorsese buy the rights to that and get you to do no, it? No, Universal did? bought it for him, and he was going to do it at first, but he's doing Casino now with, with Pesci and De Niro, so he's, he's still going to be the executive producer on it. Yeah, and have you cast it? Yes, Harvey Keitel is going to play Rock. Bad. Delroy Lindo is going to play Rodney. Yeah. John Turturro is going to play Mazzilli. God, these are great actors. Did, did you get pretty much who you wanted? Yes, that's yeah. the people we wanted, and... Uh, Start shooting in July and be out next summer. Why Harvey Cattell? Just right? Well, we, we liked his frontal nudity and the no, piano yeah, and the on. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. You like piano? Would you like piano as a movie? Yes, I think Jane Camp is a great filmmaker. Yeah. Who has influenced you the most? As a filmmaker? Yeah. I'd have to say Mr. Scorsese. Really? And I, I, I get it's an honor, you know, that found me working together. And he's always taken an interest in my work, even though I was. Just, uh, you know, running those NYU films to him, going up to him, asking him questions. You know, he took time out. He didn't know who I was, but mm. he did. Do you, do you talk a lot about making films now? I mean, With you him? see him? Yeah. Yeah, we see each other uh, infrequently because we're both, both yeah. so busy. But when we get together, you know, it's nonstop of just talking about cinema. My impression is, and tell me whether this is just wrong, is that for young African-American filmmakers, this is a good time. You got you leading the pack. Mm -hmm. The Hughes brothers, Singleton. Mary Van Peebles. Mary, Be Mary Van Peebles has just made Posse and is probably doing something else now. Yes, he's doing the, the Black Panther story now. Uh, through one character or another? Or uh, uh, you know, Huey. Huey, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they really do seem to be a group of you. Ernest Dickerson. Yeah, Ernest Dickerson. Matty who, Wiss, who made Julie great, Dash. Yeah. I would say that there has never been a better time than now. Yeah. Is it because... But I want to prep that by saying the door is still not wide open and we're still not able, you know, the type of films that we're able to make is still limited. Either yeah. it's a comedy or it's a hip-hop, yeah. gangsterhood, yeah. rap movie. So, you know, we're still not allowed the leeway, but, you know, I but guess... But you it's included? Come. Not you. Well, you can do whatever you want to. Within a... Yeah, I mean, but Jungle Budgetary, Fever, but Jungle Fever was a love story, I mean, what I thought. Yeah? You're very, uh... Right. <laughs> no, 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 I know, I, I'm kidding you, but, but, what, but it was, in fact, I mean, I think it was I a can broad make, theme. This was I can, not a, I can make any film I want That's right. within budgetary yeah. constraints, and, I, and I'm grateful for that, but yeah. not, it's still not like that across the board. No, but you're the exception, really, in a sense, for uh, the most part. I'm, I've been fortunate. Yeah. What did it cost Jungle Fever? That, that was... What did that cost? Yeah. I think it cost like 14 And you Same made... Same price as Crooklyn. Yeah, and it made, what, Jungle Fever? I think 33. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, Wesley. Snipes. Snipes. Can't afford him anymore. Is that right? Can't afford him. I think it's eight, nine million dollars a movie. Is he the, does he get more than Denzel? Yes. Is that because he's, the films have been more successful? Is it simply bookkeeping? I don't know what it is. I guess they, the people that pay out the money 
say that Wesley, you know, yeah. you know, he's a, has an action crowd. Yeah, the St Sylvester Stallone group. So I guess they. And Arnold Schwarzenegger. Anymore, but I can't afford Wesley anymore. I tell yeah. him that all the time. And what does he say? You're right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> he laughs. But it's true. He won't do it. Suppose you went to him and said, "Look, do this for me. This is an important film." Uh, you're the right guy. You know, you and Denzel will knock him he dead. He would tell me to go talk to his agent in CAA no, CAA. And, and his and his yeah. manager, Lawrence Robbins, would tell me to take a hike. He would. They would. Yeah. I mean, what, what about Wesley and, and, and Denzel together? You and know, the cost. Like Redford and, and Newman, huh? A buddy You picture. would think so. But I don't know if they want to spend that much. What if, because they might say, oh, you know, Hollywood... They don't think it could cross over. They don't think yeah. that a wide movie go, movie going audience is going to see it in Peoria. Yeah. They're not. They're not going to want to make that type of. Film. Are they right? I don't think they're right. Yeah. I think that audiences will come out to yeah. see a good film if if it's if it's marketed correctly. Yeah. Uh, what's tell me what delusions you think there are the people who make who are responsible for what movies America sees. I mean, they, do they not trust the audience, or are they simply? I think that the people that make movies. I think they're very disrespectful to the intelligence of the American movie going audience. I think that they play down to the commas, you know, the lowest common denominator, you know, the lowest level, and uh, they just try to play the audience like they're stupid. And I, I think that's uh, when you do that, you end up making, you know, seventy-five million dollar bombs, like Last Action Hero or something. Why do you want me to name? <laughs> Films, people, <laughs> players, who's Mike Tyson get rid of? You know, I, I can You know, I mean, you're an out front, candid guy, that's yeah, why. This, but this is the new warm, gentler Spike. Oh, oh is it? Now, tell me this. Has, <laughs> has Spike changed at all? I mean, you're married now. No, I'm married. Huh? I'm married now. Yeah, I mean, has that changed you? That's what my friends tell my I wife know. all the time. That's what I hear. How has I, it changed you? I myself cannot see the change, but my friends tell this you, to my do wife. Do you feel all the time. different? I mean, do you feel some sense of, you know, mellowing? Or I just think that you have a greater sense of responsibility yeah. to marry that. You know, that is not just you anymore. And that's the way it should be when you get married. Yeah. Had you been looking for a long time? No, I wasn't looking. It just, it just happened. What happened? You met her in the elevator or something? What was it? It was at the Congressional Black Caucus in D.C. two years ago, and. I was going down an escalator. escalator. She was going up an escalator. Oh, boy, this is a movie. This and is then a I, movie. And then I and? made and? a quick... <laughs> I went back up the escalator real quick. And what did you say to her when you got there? You got a minute? Yeah, I got a minute. Oh, she, you said it. <laughs> yeah, all right, you said, you, you said you got a minute. Yeah, do you have a minute? Yeah, and she said, what's up? Yeah, she said, I got a minute. Yeah. And it's like I got to talk to you. Yeah. And then we got married. <laughs> well, no, no, no. It was like what, what was the? It was, it was no a year after that. So. Yeah. So you had a chance to get to know each mm -hmm. other. Yeah. It's, and but it's made you, uh, you feel better about yourself. It's made you more. I think that you know what I mean. It it, it, so yes, it gives you it gives, you, think it gives you a larger perspective. It makes you. If you got whole. somebody in your life to live for, I mean, other than whole. just yourself. I mean, before this, it was all for Spike. Now it's I think for that Spike if you find the right partner. You know, life, it makes you whole. Yeah. So we're all incomplete. We have a Let me ask down. you this. You live on Martha's Vineyard. No, 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 no. I live in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, but you have, Brooklyn, have a house in Martha's Vineyard. I have a house in Martha's Vineyard. A, That's different. I have a house in Martha's Vineyard. No, it's more than a house. How many acres you got up there? Come on, it's, tell me. It's two and a half. Two and a half acres? Yeah. On the water right there in Martha's Vineyard. It's not on the water. It's on the sketch. You can watch it. I pronounced the wrong pond. Sketch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never get it. Correct pronunciation. Yeah. Why Martha's Vineyard? Although I mean, there's a there's a nice there's, there's there has always been there's an African American always, there's community always there. There's always been a, an African American community there since the early 40s. Right. But my one of my best friends, John Wilson, his grandmother's had a house this there since Wilson the 40s. From, yeah, go ahead. And uh, when we were in college at Morehouse, he used to invite me up to Martha's Vineyard for Fourth of July, Labor Day, Memorial Day. I loved yeah. it, and I've been fortunate enough to to buy a house. Yeah. There. Great to see. Thank Spike you. Lee. The mo movie is called. Uh, Crooklyn, uh, just out, been out for several weeks. Uh, Spike's next film is Clockers, which he is directing with Harvey Keitel and others. Back in a moment.